Hello, I'm Sha and today I'll be presenting my work ICAM on interruptible classification and regression with feature attribution. We developed an interruptible deep learning method for visualization of class relevant features of an image. In this paper, our goal was to explain a prediction using feature maps generated by our method. To achieve this, we use a VGAN network with a shared data in space and an additional regression layer to disentangle class relevant features and encode phenotopic variability that occurs in brain imaging data. We showed that ICAM can be used to analyze aging by examining the latent space and generating feature maps directly from the latent space for explanation. So how does ICAM work? So here's an example of how ICAM works for Alzheimer's prediction where MCI is mild cognitive impairment and AD is Alzheimer's. In addition to prediction of AD and MCI, we also predict the MMSC score, which is a cognitive function score that is used to diagnose Alzheimer's. So during training in a single pass, ICAM takes as input two unpaired images. So here, for example, MCI and AD. Um, so these images would be required to be from different classes and that are then encoded into the shared content space and, in, and into the attribute space. So the content space encodes class irrelevant information that, and the attribute space encodes class relevant information. So actually using this attribute space, um, we can then also do prediction using two linear layers as shown here, one for classification and one for regression. So after the encoding part, the attribute vector is swapped to achieve translation between AD and MCI. Then we get the feature attribution map. Um, we take away the original input image, and then you get this feature map. So if you'd like to know a bit more detail about our method, please check out our archive paper for further details. So during the inference, in addition to translating between two subjects, you can also encode an image into the content space and then achieve translation by sampling, sampling the attribute latent space multiple times. So because we have the um, linear layers which do prediction, we can reject samples which are in the incorrect class and then for achieve translation that way. We can then also generate variance and mean maps by taking the average and variance across these um, feature vectors. So these would then highlight errors related to the class. Finally, to highlight what can be achieved using ICAM, we use the Biobank dataset, which is a dataset used to study aging. In this example, we show two subjects that are age matched, but ICAM gives a different prediction for each one. So, here we have subject one that is of age 47 and is predicted to be 48, but subject two, um, also age 47, is predicted to be 56, which is an outlier. So to highlight which errors cause subject two to be predicted as an outlier, we can translate between these two subjects to get the difference between them. And so a feature map um, that are shown on the right. So in the last two columns here, we plot the feature maps um, the red and blue maps on top of the real images to indicate what errors cause the subject to be predicted as an outlier. So here we indeed see that the relevant brain regions are detected, for example, the ventricles, the cortex and hippocampus. In the second example, we use two subjects of different ages and encode them using ICAM to get a latent space vector. In addition to the latent space vector, we can also get an age prediction. So once these two images are encoded, we can actually interpolate between these two vectors um, in the latent space and then get a prediction for each vector as well as a feature map for each vector. Each vector can be fed into the generator, which will then create your feature map, which is shown uh, in the middle. Um, when you interpolate the latent vector, you can also see interpolation of the feature map. So we show that the interpolation is smooth between different ages. 
showing that the ventricles slowly decrease in size when interpolating from an older subject to a younger subject. Finally, I'd like to thank my collaborators in my group at, at King's College Metrics. Thank you.